Aston Martin has been going through a rough patch in the second half of the season, and a major part of that goes to Lance Stroll and his recent performance. After his horrifying crash in Singapore and the tantrum in the garage during the Qatar GP, one in which he pushed his trainer and threw the steering wheel of his car, it's safe to say that maybe Lance is not the most motivated driver on the grid right now. Considering the fact that he's holding a massive reason as to why his father is still in the business, things could turn south for Aston Martin very quickly, as the name change has only fueled rumours that Lawrence Stroll is looking to sell the team. To add the cherry on top, he already has an official offer for the team, and now it's up to him to decide whether the project he had in mind is still worth it if it's without his son in the big picture. It goes without saying that one of the biggest disappointments so far in 2023 is Lance Stroll. And not just because he wasn't able to keep up with his teammates, after all, we're talking about a two-time world champion who's gone head-to-head -head with some of the greatest F1 minds in the history of the sport, but having zero podiums compared to Alonso's seven and being 136 points behind him in the Drivers' Championship definitely speaks volumes as to where your mindset and mentality are right now in the sport. To top that off, Stroll only has 47 points in the Drivers' Championship and he's barely holding on to the 10th spot, with Gasly and Ocon being one and three points behind the Canadian driver. And both of them have got one podium finish in 2023, which is still more than Stroll. Lance's best finish in 2023 was the P4 during the sprint race in Austria, and ever since that, we haven't been able to see anything from what seems to be a bright and prospective talent during his F3 and Williams days. But ever since his father entered the sport, for which he should be thanking Lance because had it not been for his F1 career, his father wouldn't have bought Racing Point and then led the consortium of investors in Aston Martin to pursue a business opportunity in F1, it seems like Lance has entered into a comfort zone, one that's more or less impossible to exit right now. Lawrence's statements that Lance's seat is safe for as long as he's the leader of the team may have fueled the self-confidence and arrogance in Stroll even more. But after the horrifying crash in Singapore and after David Croft's statements that Lance had different career plans, it seems like Lawrence might actually consider pulling out of the sport for the better of all sides involved. Lance, the future of Aston Martin and his own pocket. Lance's mother, Claire Anne, has also been actively bidding towards the scenario of her son pursuing a career in other fields after the crash in Singapore. And as if that wasn't enough, Aston Martin is notching severe losses outside of the F1 project in 2023 those that will have doubled compared to this time last year. As we all know, Aston Martin is using its F1 project to additionally enhance the value of the brand outside of this motorsport category. But with investors reportedly starting to cool off considering the relationship between Lawrence and Lance and the performance of the latter, it seems like the top three team in the first half of the season is now slowly but surely starting an avalanche process of breaking down bit by bit, to the point of Lawrence actually opting out to sell the team to the first bidder. And this first bidder is Aramco, the company that is basically the team's title sponsor and the company that will remain as the single one after Cognizant has stepped down from this role from 2024 onwards. Lawrence Stroll himself spoke about this situation, and while he said that this is only moving the team in a better direction because Cognizant has signed a contract to deepen the relationship with the team, one can help but note that the announcement from the IT company came at the worst time possible. Aramco has definitely made an offer for owning Aston Martin's racing rights in total, one that was estimated to be around $800 million. And while Lawrence has denied the offer, we need to remind you that it was made a couple of months ago, when it was all rose petals for the team. Now that they're definitely losing the battle in pace and performance with McLaren, and everything is supposed to start on a clean sheet from 2024 onwards, which would very likely see Aston Martin as the fifth fastest team on the grid, I don't think that Lawrence Stroll is that far away from selling his team. After all, one of the biggest reasons as to why he's still in this sport, his son, is just not showing enough motivation and performance, and there's only so much you can achieve with being pushed by your father's money and ambition. I admire Lawrence Stroll for his vision and his project. He did sign Honda from 2026 onwards to be Aston Martin's engine supplier, and he did poach some vital staff from Red Bull and Mercedes, starting with Dan Fallows, who was the head of aerodynamics at Red Bull and is now the technical director of the Silverstone-based team. But, in this entire scenario of Aston Martin winning races and championships, he had envisioned his son to be the leader, not the follower. That's something that even Alonso diplomatically admitted through one of the press conferences earlier this year, asking everybody to keep the pressure off Lance as he is a future world champion in the making. A statement that was made in good spirit of Alonso keeping his relationship with Lawrence on a warm note. Aramco is not only Aston Martin's title sponsor, they are one of the biggest investors in F1. And after being part of the sport for so long, you cannot help but wonder, when is the time when you actually want to invest with a team on your own? That is the current case with Andretti and the increased popularity and interest in the USA, 
and from a financial aspect, it would only make sense for Aramco to own their own team. But with Liberty Media, the owners of F1 have had such a strict policy that whenever a new team applies as an entrant, buyout is more or less the only option that a side outside of Andretti will be able to enter the sport as even the most talked about and potential American individual in F1 won't have it easy being the 11th competitor on the grid. If you think about it, $800 million is definitely not a bad sum for selling the team. And although many think of Lawrence as a delusional investor for trying to make his son a champion in Aston Martin, when he is clearly far behind the top talent on the grid, he is a businessman who makes rational decisions. That's why he brought Aston Martin to where they are now. But after realizing that this might be the ceiling of his financial and personal dream, he might want to pull the plug on the entire project, especially if his ex-wife and Lance's mother, Claire Ann, pursue him to think about the health of his son. Aston Martin has also entered conversations to enter different racing categories, such as Le Mans 24 and World Endurance Championships, and these projects might sound like more reasonable ones for Lance Stroll. If we look at Antonio Giovinazzi, he was also viewed as a great talent in his early F1 days, but he just couldn't make it stick for a long period of time. On the other hand, he won the legendary Le Mans 24 race for Ferrari, making a name for himself in another motorsport category. It wouldn't be a shame for Lance to admit that there is just no future for him in this sport, and just like all projects that are doomed to fail, he shouldn't be an exception if he doesn't prove in the next year and a half that he's just not made out of F1 cloth. Yes, we've seen some flashes of him in Williams and in Racing Point, but ever since his father struck the deal with Aston Martin and kept Lance more or less under a glass stain, protected from all the rumours of him being replaced, the downfall in his performance has been significant. Now, what would happen to Aston Martin if Lance was replaced? Or more precisely, who would be his replacement? One of the loudest names in the paddock has been Yuki Tsunoda, because after all, he's part of Honda's academy, and it would make logical sense for Honda to pursue a seat for their driver the same way they did in Red Bull when they signed the engine supply deal. However, Helmut Marko has been vividly defending Yuki's situation with Red Bull, saying that if Aston Martin wanted to poach him along with the Honda deal, they would have to enter talks with Red Bull, as the contractual situation of Yuki clearly states he's under the obligations with the Austrian, not the Japanese company. However, we've seen how two F1 champions can thrive under the right conditions with Oscar Piastri, and we cannot help but wonder whether Aston Martin has bigger plans for Felipe Drogovic, who is the reserve driver for the Silverstone Bay squad and has been patiently waiting for an opportunity to show his dominant form from 2022's F2 season. Be that as it may, Aston Martin will have one of the toughest decisions ahead of them. But as all things stand, there is no place for Lance Stroll in this team anymore, as all indications point towards one inevitable scenario, him being replaced if Aston Martin wants to live another year in the sport. So far till this day, the future of Lance and Aston Martin goes well beyond uncertain, but that doesn't effectively mean that they're going downhill. If this situation doesn't create enough pressure on Lance to improve his form, then there are zero to no chances he'll obtain a seat in F1 in the foreseeable future.